Hey, everybody, and welcome back. <laughs> Almost got caught playing around with the screen. Anyway, hey, here's the thing. So most buyers are willing to suffer the strain for homeownership. And we'll be able to go through those metrics. We're going to talk a little bit about what the heck is going on in the market. We're going to talk a little bit about the why and what should we expect between now, basically the end of September till October, you know, October 1st, until the end of the year. What should we expect? What is the market going to do? And what in the world are going to go on with mortgages? All right. So remember, this is the channel where you get all the really good information. So make sure that you subscribe, share, and like the information because really at the end of the day, hey, listen, there's no selling here, but what you do get is really solid information. There's a lot of noise out there. Make sure you're getting what you need to get right now. So let's uh, let's uh, let's go on. Let's get uh, a little bit to show on the road, as they say. Take a look at this. So yes, the Northwest MLS has a brand new format, and uh, it's taken a little bit to get used to. We don't get that full on screen, but the nice thing is that we uh, we get a little bit of this. So when you take a look at new listings at 963, that's new on market versus 1,153 pended homes, 925 homes that have sold. So you can see that even though we have, a, uh, what, about 122, 120 homes back on market, here's the thing. When you take a look at what is happening each and every week, except for two different weeks, going back literally a year ago, the, the number of homes that have pended have exceeded the number of homes that are new on market. And of course, the solds are just, you know, they're running right in there. They're very consistent. That's telling us that we still have a massive buyer demand. Now, understand our inventory is still low. It is way low. And in fact, we're probably about half of where we should be, maybe just a little over half. But when we take a look at what's going on in the market and we take a look at this chart right here listen you've got 28 percent less homes that have sold we are uh, 25 home percent homes that have so less that have sold and we also have 28 percent less on market now what's most important as you saw is rolling around there listen if we compare that to an average market where we should have about 18 thousand homes Holy smokes, uh, we're like 42% under where we should be. And that is about right because most folks are like, oh, there's just not a lot of options. There's not a lot to look at. And you're absolutely right uh, because we are suffering inventory issues. And in fact, that is what is truly propping up a lot of the home values because, well, look, it's economics 101 for heaven's sakes, supply and demand. Remember, Back in 2020, March of 2020, everybody was saying, oh my gosh, the market's going to crash. Everybody's got to stay at home. This is COVID. Real estate is over. It's never coming back. Well, that never happened. And it still hasn't happened. So as we are going through and taking a look at the metrics, let's keep it in perspective, right? Because other than our 2008 through 2010 debacle, our, in, our, our inventory has been super low uh, historically, even since uh, the depression, uh, you know, home values have gone up. People do very well market wise. Now, if you're looking at an, an, an investor who's always trying to be like a day trader, okay, super high risk, not going to work, not going to be an effective tool, especially in a really tough market. Now, if we take and we roll into new construction, so new construction, uh, which is super interesting, you can see here that we have about 4% less homes sold, 22%, almost 20% more. When you take a look at the same month, year over year, so September and September, since we're at the end of the month here, you can see our numbers are doing really well. In fact, new construction is doing amazingly well, and again, a contributing factor to what is propping up real estate. Now, on the flip side, there are a lot of costs that are increasing. 
And there's a lot of issues that are going on uh, in the new construction world that are going to affect pricing. <laughs> Mortgage interest rates is one of them. However, there's a lot of incentives out there that builders are offering. And again, one of the key reasons that we are seeing a lot of uh, activity in the new construction arena. Now, let's take it on the ips, the inverse side of that. Let's talk about REOs and bank-owned homes. When we take a look at this, you can see very clearly that our numbers are super low, okay? Uh, we're a couple of homes extra sold. We're a couple of homes extra on market. If we take that and we actually roll that across to uh, you know the same month, year over year, holy smokes, you might look at those numbers and go, wow, <laughs> look at that, 120%. That's 15 homes, who cares? That's across half of Washington state. There's more cities than number of homes that uh, are additionally for sale or have sold, you know, uh, year over year for the same month of September. Yeah. So small potatoes. Are we seeing a little bit of an uptick in some of the default rates? Not very much in our area. We are seeing uh, some notices that are going out. Not a ton. Nothing that would be alarming. And in fact, uh, there's a lot of different offers and opportunities out there uh, for people to work with that keeps them out. Why? Since 2020, we're about 33 to 36% and as high as 42% in some areas, greater value than where we were March of 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic. So we have a lot of flexibility. We've got a lot of price support because of the fact that we are one of the five sweet spots across the United States for a lot of different reasons. So make sure that you're not listening to the news and hearing uh, some parts of California or some parts of Arizona or <laughs> some parts of Texas, because it doesn't matter. We are not any of those. So moving on, if we take a look at the mortgage uh, rate watch in and of itself, okay? So as we come in, you can see that our rates have been bumping up. There's a lot of catches that come into this, all right? And one of the biggest ones in the, that we're looking at is watching the bond rates. Because remember, the feds have nothing to do with mortgage rates. Feds affect mortgage rates, but they have nothing to do with mortgage rates. The however is, when we start taking a look at the bonds and that the 10-year treasuries, which we follow pretty consistently, even though they're not tied together, they actually mirror each other very well, uh, you know, historically speaking. So when we take a look at rates, yeah, rates took an absolute jump and then boop, came back down. And then, in fact, some of your key lenders actually reduced rates where others actually kind of bumped them up a little bit. So when we take a look at our next slide here, we can see that you know home price appreciation continues, and even this is on a national level, uh, we kind of quote, keep defying the odds. A lot of that is because of inventory issues. Yes, there's a commercial real estate uh, crisis, uh, which will affect lending because if you have a asset that is in default or has to refinance, uh, that that puts it on a different side of the ledger. That means that the bank can't lend on it. If banks have a problem lending, well, then they can't make mortgages. And that's part of where they're coming into. This is going to be a little bit of an issue. That's going to be a yes and a no. Commercial side, absolutely. Commercial's in uh, a wee, <laughs> wee bit of trouble. There's always an opportunity in a, in a lot of different arenas. And in fact, many of us are gearing up to be cash heavy so that we can take advantage of some of those commercial opportunities where banks don't want to deal with them. And we can actually step in and, uh, you know, whether we uh, take a property back or we, you know, we do something different. You know, don't be not a doom and gloomer. It's just another opportunity. Make sure you're asking those questions if you're of that mindset also. Anyway, moving on. We take a look at this. At the end of every month, well, the beginning and the end, we talk about what's going on. So Ever Out Seattle, it's a it's a great site. And this one is another, again, great opportunity. As you can see from their website, they go through. We have, uh, you know, the Leavenworth Oktoberfest. We roll down. Yes, wait for it. Here we go. Chocolate. <laughs> this time of year, it seems that we got 
tons of chocolate. Well, Bellevue has uh, the Northwest Chocolate Festival. It's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure that you jump out, take a look at it. We'll go ahead and we'll post this link in uh, down below. And uh, with that, make sure, yes, as we like to say, smash that subscribe button. Have an absolute fabulous weekend. Uh, it's, a, it's a little cloudy out there. So make sure you stay warm and uh, make sure that you are watching this information. It comes out at least once a week and we do provide uh, midweek information. We also have the fall honeydew list that is coming up. You're gonna wanna watch that so that you get those items taken care of so you can mitigate any water or potential damage issues in your house. In the meantime, I will see you on the next video and have an absolutely fabulous day. Take care.